All right, it's time to do the last of the art lesson series. This lesson series was uh, converting actual art concepts that I had taught at Art Summer Camp for Gallery One back in 2019 and turning them into quick little YouTube videos because 2020 happened and COVID happened and it's 2021 now and COVID's still happening. So we're still working on this online learning stuff. Now the last element of art that I'm going to talk about is form. And I'm going to bundle a whole bunch of other things into this, including material, texture, uh, mark making, and tools. And I know if you look at Wikipedia, uh, form is a earlier on the list of the elements of art. It comes in number three, and I have it down here at the end. Well, what's going on with that? Well, form has to do with something's three-dimensional shape. And that's why Wikipedia had it right after shape. But I've put it at the end because as soon as you talk about three-dimensional shape, you've got to talk about what you're using to make that physical shape happen. Now, we've done this a little bit before. I mean, when we were working with line, you could have done your line in pencil or in pen or in charcoal. And when we were talking about space, we could use stamps or stencils. So that's how the mark making works. And we did a little bit of mark making with our tools and drafting tools. And when we came to color, do we want to use oil pastels or paints or chalks? We've done a little bit of this materialism, but as soon as you get into form, a three-dimensional form, well, it's just all out there and open for you. For example, let's say somebody wanted a dragon. And they say, you, you're an artist, make me a dragon. So you start by drawing a dragon. Maybe you do it in ink. Maybe you start using paints and things like that. And then they come back to it and say, whoa, 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 wait a second. I want a three-dimensional dragon. And then without any more feedback, they leave your artist space. And now you have to figure out how you're going to make a three-dimensional dragon. Now you've got to decide what you're going to make this dragon out of. Folded paper, molded paper mache, sculpted clay, cast metal, chiseled wood, carved stone, welded metal. You've got a lot of choices in front of you. It's, it's going to be very different depending on what material you choose to use. The material you choose to use also changes the texture of what you're making. This is very apparent when we're talking about textile arts or sewing. If you make a dress, it's going to be a very different textured dress, depending on if you make it out of denim or silk or plastic or meat. Yeah. So here is where you get to start experimenting. I would like you to try to do all of those different art projects that we've just done over the last six lessons and then try to do them with other materials, not just for what you are uh, marking with pencil, charcoal, oil pastels, paints, but also change what you are marking on. Go ahead and make some art on paper, on canvas, on wood, on stone, on fabric, on skin. No, you don't have to use a tattoo. You can always just use body paints. Just Try it on as many different types of uh, material as you can, as well as changing what you're using to do the marking. Just get as wide of an experience as you possibly can. And here's the reason why. Never pigeonhole yourself. If you think that the only thing you can do is draw with pencils, and then you are not given a pencil, you will feel like you have been cut off from art entirely. If you feel the only thing you can do is paint and you no longer have access to paint, it will feel like you cannot create anything. And that's not true. As our bodies grow and age and mature, we need to be able to adapt what we do to match our creativity. When we're very young, we don't have the motor skills to stay within lines of a coloring book that we made ourselves because we didn't have the motor control to make those lines in the first place. As we grow and mature, 
We change our tastes in what we want to make creatively. And then we have to learn how to adapt because eventually there will be physical changes that make it so you have to adapt. Eyes don't see as well and as detailed as they used to without serious assistance from optometrists. Hands become less dexterous and stiff when the weather is not good. And that's why it's good to have a breadth of experience in different materials, because you never know what you might want to move on to next. So go out there and change things up. If you have a drawing, try making it three-dimensional. This is really great for people who are costumers and cosplayers who already are used to taking an image on a two-dimensional screen or piece of paper and then trying to make it real life. Try to reinterpret things with materials that you happen to have on hand. Go ahead and draw your mandala, but then also try to make your mandala out of marbles. Do all the things that you can to just adapt your art to different techniques, different materials, different textures. Thank you so much for joining me for this video series. I hope you uh, enjoyed looking at all the different art projects. I hope you can incorporate some of these ideas into your home or your classroom or your daycare or your own art practice. This video series was made possible by a grant from the Ellensburg Arts Commission. When COVID-19 shut down local galleries, artist studios, and art classes, the Ellensburg Arts Commission started up a small grants for local artists to help us make it through these hard times. Thank you for watching and have a great day.